Okay, I'm now gonna demonstrate a combination of verification phishing and cross IDP impersonation. So what I've got set up here on the left is our victim, on the right is our attacker. So I'm just gonna show the victim on the left how they ordinarily access uh, their IDP. In this case, we're using Microsoft Enter as an example. And then we're going to use Atlassian as an example of a downstream SaaS application that they perform an SSO login to using Microsoft. So our Microsoft Enter account <clears throat> is very strongly protected with passkeys in this case. So I need to know the pin and have the local YubiKey that I use in this case. Uh, and I need to touch that and that gives me a strong passkey based authentication method to Microsoft Enter. So that's how our user normally logs into Enter. If they then want to log into Atlassian, they would go and pick the option to log in with Microsoft. Atlassian supports all the major authentication providers, and in this case, we're using Microsoft. We'll pick our account, and then this acts as an SSO-based login mechanism, and we access our account this way. Now, if you're following along from the blog post, you've probably already seen the background around verification phishing, and will have seen the different scenarios around this we've discussed. For the purposes of this demo, I'm just going to assume the phishing bit has been successful. I'm just going to show you the mechanisms by which the cross IDP impersonation occurs. Uh, as in the blog post, we, you know, we could have used some email based phishing. We could have used some instant messenger based phishing. We could have even made a sophisticated attacker in the middle verification phishing attack. The point is we need to convince the target user to give us a verification code once. And that's, that's all we need. And that's the point of this phishing exercise. So on the right, in a different browser as an attacker, I am now trying to create an Apple account as our target user by sp specifying their email address. We could do this with Google as well uh, and other identity providers. I'm just using Apple as an example here. But in order to do this, we need to verify that account and verify the email. So as an attacker on the right, I'm going to say, let's try and register for an Apple account as this user. And it's going to prompt me for this verification code. This is the phishing part where we need to get this account. So for the purposes of this demo, this is where I'm going to assume that we've phished it from the user in some way. So we take this account, uh, take this code, we enter it, and this enables us to verify the Apple account. Now, after this, yes, we need to verify a phone number, but this is not the target's phone number. This is one we've supplied during the setup. We supplied our own phone number. We supplied our own password and all the other details. So at this point, as an attacker, I'm just going to my own phone to get the verification number. This is purely an Apple control for reducing uh, mass account creation and, and the spam problems that go along with that. And we've now created our Apple account. So here's where it gets interesting with the cross IDP impersonation component. Rather than log in with Microsoft, I'm going to go to Atlassian and say, I want to log in with Apple. And the point is, with one single verification code, I've now created an Apple account with the same email address as our target user. So I can log in with my Apple account. It's going to prompt me for 2FA from my own phone number. This, again, this is not related to the target. This is my phone number as an attacker. So I'm going to go through the Apple 2FA process. And once I've done that, I'll be signed in with my Apple account. And in doing so, I can then say I would like to access Atlassian using this Apple account. And Atlassian will map that to the same email address as the previous account. And therefore, I will now be logged in as Cody in the same way. So the point of this is that in this case, an organization would probably have expected that their very secure passkey based SSO method is the way that their Atlassian accounts and any other downstream SaaS applications with SSO configured would work. But it's often overlooked that other identity providers may be allowed. And in this case, the barrier for creating an Apple account or a Google account is much lower than the ability to compromise the original target's Microsoft account. So we can't compromise their passkey based uh, authentication without, say, an endpoint compromise. But we can potentially perform a verification phishing attack to get one single verification code and then we can permanently take over their identity via cross IDP impersonation in any downstream apps that allow this. It is important to note in this case that I've done this with Atlassian as one example. Uh, Atlassian in its default configuration will allow this. You can sign up for Atlassian Guard and restrict which uh, identity providers are allowed to be used for accounts. Many other SaaS applications will have similar setups um, and be configurable in different ways. So this very much does depend on the configuration of the downstream apps, but this is just used as an example in this case to demonstrate the broad class of attack 